All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is our uh, great pleasure to welcome you to the joint 14th IEEE International Conference on Trust, Security and Privacy uh, in Computing and Communications, the ninth uh, IEEE International Conference on uh, Big Data si uh, Science and Engineering and the uh, 13th IEEE International Symposium on Parallel and Distributed Processing with Applications. Uh, this event is sponsored by IEEE, uh, IEEE Computer Society and endorsed by uh, IEEE Technical Committee on uh, Scalable Computing uh, and IEEE Circuits and Systems Society Technical Committee on Digital Signal Processing. Aalto University will be hosting this conference and uh, ISN, the state key lab of integrated service networks, Syrian University is the co-organizer. Uh, this conference uh, combines timely uh, and highly relevant topics for academy and in industry, cybersecurity, big data, and uh, distributed and parallel processing. Uh, this timing is uh, heightened uh, by the uh, context of uh, the current and future research on uh, the fifth generation mobile systems. Cloud computing is uh, evolved from uh, parallel computing system, supercomputing, then eventually grid computing, now cloud computing. And the difference between grid computing and cloud computing, I think the major difference is the economic model. Basically, now cloud computing pay per use model. So basically, you pay whatever you use. Right. So this model fit this capitalist uh, economic model well. So, p so that's why this model is very popular among many companies. People know this model can make money. Right. So that's the major one. And uh, if you are talking about uh, what's cloud computing really, I think you can say cloud computing, data center, supercomputing, plus this pay per use model. I think this summarizes the major uh, capture the major image of this cloud computing. Hey, professor, uh, would you please tell us more about that kind of touch-free fingerprint recognition system that you mentioned in your speech? Mm -hmm. Uh, traditionally, the uh, biometric technologies which are used uh, in uh, uh, automatic border control and in many other uh, applications spawning from that uh, are using uh, uh, touch-based uh, uh, sensors, for example, for fingerprint or uh, for uh, palm print or other uh, biometries. And this may pose uh, uh, significant limits in the usability and acceptance of uh, this kind of technologies. In some geographical areas, in some cultures, uh, touching these devices uh, may not be considered appropriate or uh, may not be safe from the point of view of health, especially in some geographical areas uh, where there are illnesses uh, which can be spread by touching uh, uh, devices. Uh, so in our research uh, we studied the use uh, of uh, new uh, approaches based on contactless and uh, uh, analysis of uh, fingerprint and palm print so that we can avoid this kind of problems and we can also increase uh, the accuracy 
of uh, the collection of these biometries since uh, we do not have uh, some uh, side effect uh, due to touching uh, the devices like uh, uh, imperfection in the collection of uh, the uh, biometries or fingerprint in uh, smearing uh, in the image uh, or uh, other kind of problems related to the quality of the collected image. Please help me welcome Crucial to, to make sure that people are not tempted by the fastest growing part of IT. Even though, I mean, IT is growing, like I said, but the fastest growing part is IT crime. Mm -hmm. Everything is growing. Nothing is growing as fast as IT crime, and there's easy money to be made there by breaking the law. And that's why it's important that our school and our education systems educate early enough to people that you shouldn't break the law, you shouldn't do bad stuff online, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't hack. If you're interested in doing low-level hacking, you can do it all legally by you know, joining a security company, and you're then actually helping people. And the real challenge we have with online crime is that it's mostly coming geographically from areas where, where there's lots of people with skills mm. but without the opportunities. So let's say you live in rural China or somewhere in Siberia or in mm. the slums of Sao Paulo and you are a programmer, you know how to program, but you can't get a job with your skills in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So it's not that far-fetched to think that some of those people end up in the life of crime and use their skills there to make their living. Really, we are on, uh, Professor Petty is really one of the most well recognized research in the field of uh, complex intelligence and energy scope. It's an exciting area, I think. When we are talking about information granulars, we are really talking about some concepts that are so inherently associated with humans. The way how we acquire knowledge, the way how we process knowledge, and the way how we communicate our findings to the environment. So, uh, in essence, whatever we perceive, we perceive and describe a phenomenon in terms of something that is more abstract than numbers. Well, we are not very good at numbers. We do not, are not sort of capable of multiplying large numbers. We are not capable of dividing them, but we are very good at forming some abstract description of the world. So what we're doing is, is essentially we are bringing some individual entities and we start labeling them because they have something in common. They have some similarity, they have some spatial closeness, they have some temporal closeness, they have some functional resemblance and so on. But the term itself uh, has a long history because I think you can go back to artificial intelligence, you can back to, go back to some statements being made by uh, Lot Fizade, I think in the 80s when he uh, sort of coined the term information granular but mainly in the relationship to fuzzy sets. You can talk to some other developments, but in my opinion, uh, I think we are now at the sort of turning point because, uh, yes, everybody acknowledges that information granules are important, that they are sort of central to the way of processing data and acquiring knowledge, but it's an open question how are we going to do that? And that was really just a, a striking observation that I think has to be has to be made. Namely granular computing is based on some fundamental ideas that naturally came from different areas. Set theory, interval analysis, fuzzy sets, rough sets, probabilities. But they try to build granular computing tries to build some common and unified platform. Saying okay, forget about this formalism 
forget about some specific details of this formalist, but try to build something that is unified. So in other words, irrespectively, whether you are talking about sets or fancy sets, rough sets, could you think about some principles? Could you think about the way how this information granulas could be constructed, could be processed, could be eventually communicated or interchanged with sort of different sources of knowledge. So that's, in my opinion, is uh, something that is both exciting and original. So, as I said, there is something new with granular computing, but there is something that is, uh, has been around for, for a number of decades, if not centuries. Thank you.